Hi, I'm Mav Savage. I'm a witch. I'm a bard in training and an author and a poet. Poetry is one of my great, great loves and in the theme for today's Pagan Federation Disabilities Team online festival for Lunasa, the theme is food for the soul and I thought, well, what feeds my soul? Words, songs, poetry, books. So today I'm going to talk a bit about poetry. I'm going to start by uh, reading a little bit from um, my book Celtic Witchcraft, <coughs> excuse me, which is a pagan portal in the Pagan Portal series from Moon Books. Um, the book is all about different ways that um, the Celts can influence your modern day paganism and magic, but this is particularly about the magic of poetry. Okay. Poetry is a love of mine, more than a hobby, more than a diversion, and more than simply stringing words together. Every year I participate in Napo Rimo, which is the challenge to write a poem a day for a month. Each poem must be entirely new. Making this kind of commitment to yourself is very focusing. And writing poetry in this way prompts you to be aware of everything around you. Searching for inspiration is mindfulness itself. Exploring how things are right now and recording them with the written words in a form that will entertain others. Poetry is not just about clever form and rhyming schemes. Poetry is about telling stories, using the rhythm of words to play your point into the reader or listener's mind. Poetry is about the musicality of language. Poetry is about emotion, love and loathing, pain and regret, joy and anticipation. Poetry is a vehicle for feelings, hopes and dreams. The Gaelic word that was used to Celtic poets was philly, which literally means one who sees. A good poet sees all and uses what they see to enchant and amuse others. I and Pangaban my cat, tis a like task we are at. Hunting mice is his delight, hunting words I sit all night. Better far than praise of men, tis to sit with book and pen. Panga bears me no ill will, he too plies his simple skill. This extract from Panga Ban, a poem by an anonymous Irish monk from the 9th century, likens his cat's hunt for mice to the writer's own hunt for words. The mice are elusive, but the delight in capturing them is beyond measure. And poetry is like this. The struggle to find the words that will evoke the exact emotion you are feeling is hard, strenuous, it's maddening. But the completed poem is so pleasurable. Every moment of the struggle is a joy. Okay. I really do feel that poetry feeds my soul and that struggle that I was talking about, that challenge as living beings, we, we all need a challenge, something to stretch yourself, something to take us out of our comfort zone, especially when I can be a bit housebound and sometimes I'm really not up to interacting with other people. I find that playing with words, it can help keep my mind active and alert. When I feel that I'm not capable of magic or ritual or meditation, writing a verse that resounds with my emotion at the time, it brings me back towards that magic that I felt was draining away. The words can be elusive, but chasing them, it's a form of exercise for the mind. Now, I'm going to read you a few of my poems now. And these first few poems, these first few poems um, are for and about the Tuatha Dé Nan in honour of Lou's festival for his mother, which we are celebrating this weekend and for the next few days. So, haiku for Lou. Bright poke in the eye, from Lou, golden in the blue, I reflect moonlike. Breed's arrival. When she comes, she comes in the room like a gulp of cold air, a hurricane to the face, a slap, so soft and sharp, so caring and cold, so great, so bold, so young and yet so old. Every atom sings, this lady, this goddess, this spirit, this she from beyond the hills, she came to see what you had put out for her. Sheep's milk, 
oats and apples, whiskey, candles and hope. She blasts through the door, a draft of delight in spring's awakening. We hold hands and shake as her power leaves us quaking. Motherly but not gentle, feminine and strong and wise, changing the world before our eyes. The flower opens, gasps ensue, our hands beating heat back and forth across the laden table. And that was a poem written there just after In Bulk, The Breed. And this next one was written quite a while ago for the Morrigan. And it's just called Red. Streaming red, cloak of hair like yarn spun wild for a coat of dreams of war and time to pass the line, the blood along like velvet twine. Lady great and fierce of heart, builds you up then tears apart. Protect thyself but know her if you can. Poetry is also very cathartic. Pent up emotions can be bad for us, can even lead to physical problems such as ulcers, headaches and high blood pressure and of course a multitude of mental health problems. Poetry gives us a very real outlet for the words we might not be able to say out loud to someone else. It can take us on a journey of recovery or self-discovery. It can be our punching bag our pillow to cry into and our best friend when we are all alone. Letting someone else read your poetry is a great intimacy so it can even be helpful in personal relationships or bring you closer to a family member. As an example this next poem is a poem I wrote for a friend when he was having a particularly difficult time. There is no limit on the love I can give, on the help I can send, on the words I can say. My heart may wane, but like the dark moon, it is always there, beating its energy for those that need it. So I'm tired. I'm not tired of you. So I'm beat. You did not beat me. So I'm ill. You did not infect me. I see you struggling and I will get to my feet and stand strong so you don't have to. This is the pledge of love, the truth of friendship, the power of a bond that time and pain have never defeated. So take your time and I will take your pain to places where you cannot feel it quite so sharply. I am the draught of cool water. I am the ray of warm sunshine. I am the hand that holds and the throw that casts away. Movement and stillness, hope and faith strength and fragility. I am the universe and I am just one person and as always I'll do what I can. The other thing that feeds my soul is being out in nature as I'm sure it does for many of us. Even just moving out into the garden if I'm not up for a long walk. At the moment I'm suffering from SPD so the long summer walks of previous years are a bit out of the question so it's nice even looking out of the window watching the birds and hearing their song. I probably write more poetry about birds and animals and the turn of the day and the turn of the season than probably anything else. Um, that's where I find my Arwen, the beat of my soul. This is the hawk and the half moon. Sharp wings tug at frigid air, thermals crippled by Kaliak's touch. Though sky is her hue, delightful deep blue, her breath makes the bird struggle for height, strive for flight. He circles frustrated, almost black against the colourful morning. He scars the misty white face of the half moon, a cataract eye blinking behind cloud lids, tired of night, so drifting sleepily into day. Music in my ears as this tableau, hawk framed by half moon, is forever sealed by the kiss of blessed memory.
staying on the bird theme, this is Long Dove about the blackbird. Walking with my boy, we listen to the song that has always tugged my heartstrings. Since I was as tiny as him, the evening is just over halfway gone, the sky purplish as the light wanes, and who do we hear? Long Dove, messenger of the twilight, guardian at the gates. I point him out to my boy, and we watch his chest pump and his beak bob, as atop the neighbour's roof he marks his spot in the world. His high point, his territory. And as the light finally wanes, the blackbird silhouette remains on our eyes for the rest of the war. And this is just past twilight. Enchanted by the night, rolling lust of clouds, sighs the moon, I love you. Warm summer air climbs into me, up inside me, I don't even need to breathe. The sweet violation of my lungs by bread and fumes and flowers, night blooming ecstasy. Belisha beacons blink a blurry fantasy, stripes and checks and balances, feet glide along unfettered by fear. Leaf and bud and root, hand over hand, soul clambers high to find the hidden sky, peeking from behind, rolling lust of cloud. And then this one was written for Beltane, with a little nod to the fair folk. This is the Elden Tree. Spikes spear the sky, a crown of thorns, exchanged for a crown of flowers, as May Day comes with wind and sun, with eerie fairy powers. Thomas walked beneath the tree, he met a lady fair, with velvet cloak and oak green shirt, riding a milky mare. She tempts with words and tempts with kiss, enchanting him away, to fairy land for seven years, in silence there to stay. The tree still stands, its gnarly roots drive deep into the earth. Each Beltane seals the pale blossom, each May Day fairy mirth. So wander not beneath the tree of white and green and thorn, for good neighbours aren't always fair and your family may mourn. And finally, in the nature theme, I have a poem about the owl. Curl up like the owl in the day, allergic to the light. It's salt in the wound of apathy, fragile and forced. Yes, I'm a ghost until dusk, drifting through life until darkness takes its hold. So bold, oh breathe, breathe and release. My willowy branches take a different stance. And again, I am the owl on the hunt, on the prowl, see my glowing eyes and fear me. But what if you've never written before? Well, the best answer to that is to think about what you want to write about and to read some poetry on that subject. And just Google poems about whatever it may be and read as many as you can get your hands on. Record the names of poets that inspire you. Examine how the poet strings words together. Do they use rhyme? Is it just a stream of consciousness? Make notes, mental or physical, and try to emulate the style of a writer that resonates with you. Remember, no one is marking you on this. Your poetry is magic for you and you alone. Try writing down a list of words that pop up while you are dwelling on your chosen subject. For bees, you might have honey, flowers, pollen, work, joy, summer. Form a sentence around each of these words. Now, put those sentences into an order that pleases you. Try reading it aloud. Maybe even record it and play it back to yourself. How, how does it sound? Change it until you're happy with it. Don't be afraid to edit ruthlessly, but also don't be afraid to think this is good enough and leave it as it is. When you have finished your poem, keep it somewhere safe. And if you are able and confident enough, keep it on show somewhere so you can be proud of your work. You have just externalised some of your feelings and used them to create something new in this world. 
feel the confidence that washes through you, feel that any negative emotions are diminished by this process and that positive ones are lifted and highlighted by the power of your words. Poetry is a magic that will never end. As long as we have words, we will weave them and give them to each other. I found that um, if you struggle to be abstract or to put your feelings into words, which is not always a natural thing for all of us to do, what you can do instead is just try telling a story. We can all tell stories. We all do it every time we've not seen a friend for ages and we've got something to tell them or when we've got news to pass on to family and blood or otherwise. And you don't need to worry about the rhyme or the meter or the structure. You just need to tell your story, you know, from start to finish and let the words take over. So the last poem I'm going to read to you is a little bit longer and it is a story poem. And it's about the wind, about fear, about hope, about the gods and about a yearning for magic. So this is The Wind Came at Night. In the days of chilling blaze, springtime sun as winter fades, dazzling spears and green grass blades, the gale the only blight. Driving out to picnics gay, February turning into May, hearts and smiles throughout the day, but the wind came at night. Batten hatch and throw the catch, draw the curtains and the latch, find the candle, light a match, glow ghostly and white. Lights to ward off what's outside, whatever feral monsters ride abroad, their entrance is denied, though the wind comes at night. I saw a face outside my place, swiftly passed as in a race. I blinked and there was not a trace, I shivered with the fright. I ran upstairs to check again, peering through the glass in vain, the window howled as if in pain from the wind in the night. Clutch the blade and don't be swayed, seek the spirit, seek the shade, call the cook and tell the maid, we search until the light. Laughter in the face of fear, no bravery but a butt of beer, the wetness on my face a tear from the wind in the night. I grabbed my hat and stroked the cat, I peered between the shivering slats, I shrugged my coat on, faced the mat, I now would find this white. For who was in this deathly storm? What poor fool trapped and all alone? Or was it evil upon my lawn when the wind came at night? Slam the door and stand before the howling horrors merely more. Step forward though the soul abhors this strange and streaming sight. Trees are bent and strained to rise back to the black and bubbling skies. Clouds thick and crying, flying eyes borne on the wind at night. The muddy grass was slippy glass, the rain like ice, cold, hard and fast. I braced against it, held the mast, pressed on quick as I might. To save a soul or fight a ghost, I knew not what I feared the most. So wide-eyed, I became engrossed in the wind in the night. Turn around and back you bound, running from the brutal sound. Cacophony of sky meets ground, the planet bursts to light. Or stand and see the rider's glee, the horses stamping fretfully, red eyes, black coats, white spittle, see the wind come in the night. I didn't flee, I had to see what creatures stomped and stared at me. I turned and riders, one, two, three, no reins, no bit to bite. Recognition jarred my heart, my lord, my earth, my burning hearth. My words, though, they were ripped apart by the wind in the night. See the fire, see the spark, the star, the candle in the dark, the life, the sound to which we hark, the blood, the beat, the light, the terrifying truth of life, the endless struggle, burning strife, turning key and turning knife, the wind that comes at night. It was no waif I had to save, nor any ghostly haunting wraith. I had spied from my house so safe, so warm and kind and light. Cernanus, I cried out, Hearn, take me with you, let me learn. They laughed, and all my visions burned in the wind that came at night. North or south or east or west, I know not which gust is the best. I only know I need to rest. I have no will to fight. Though each day dawns well and morning swells with promise fierce and true, once evening creeps, I cling to you, the wind 
it comes at night. Thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed the poems and I uh, hope it might inspire you to uh, a little bit of your own wordsmithing. Have a wonderful rest of the online festival and a very, very merry Lunasa. Slanshare.